Today, we're going to be turning the latest iteration of the Chaos Blank. This is my most recent revision, and what it is is Red Oak Blank, and I have veneers that I have placed between the strips and glued them up in a chaotic pattern. Let's go ahead and get this marked and ready for a tube. There's a small void in my blank right there that goes all the way through, and I want to avoid using that, but luckily it's far enough to the outside that I think I should be okay. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to find the center of my blank. Once we get the blank marked and we know where dead center is, I'll take another look and see what I think about that uh, void. All right, you can see right here where I've marked the blank for center, and that's gonna be right about here. And you can see the void is well outside of that. So I think we're gonna be okay. We should not have any issue. I've got the blank in the vise, and I'm taking the dimple on the end of the bit, and I'm placing it right into the punch hole on the end of my blank, and we're ready to drill. <laughs> I got a little too aggressive with my drilling and I blew the bottom of my blank out. I think that was on me. It wasn't anything with the blank. I just was drilling faster than I should have and not clearing the chips as often as I should have. And that's what I got. So I grabbed another blank and I went ahead and prepped it and drilled it. And it's ready for the next step. I am really liking how this blank turned out. 
That is beautiful. Just amazing. I'm very pleased with how this blank turned out. I'm gonna clean it with a little denatured alcohol. Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? I can tell you, I was a little bit nervous at first going with the solid oak and then just using the uh, the accent pieces, but I am just blown away by how incredible it looks. And I guarantee you there are going to be some more of these blanks. I have a bunch of oak and I have a bunch of great woods that will produce incredible accent pieces. And you're gonna see a little more of this in the future. I'll keep experimenting uh, with the chaos blanks. And this is this is definitely an avenue that I'm gonna to continue to pursue. Let me uh, let this denatured alcohol evaporate and I'm gonna start putting some CA finish on my blank. <laughs> Take a look at that. This is going to be gorgeous once it's finished. I'll come back and show it to you right before I begin micro meshing. I just finished putting CA on this blank. It's really thick and you're going to notice some rippling as you look at the light. That is because it is so cold and so dry in the shop. I had to use activator to get my CA to dry. CA needs moisture to dry and there just is none in the air right now. The humidity is just almost nil, um, but it's on so thick and I only used it on the last coat. Uh, it's on so thick that I should be able to buff it right out with the micro mesh and I don't expect to see any of that rippling when I'm finished. I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, nonstick bushings removed. We're gonna square the ends up and we'll be back on the lathe to micro mesh. I bumped the lathe speed up to somewhere between 11 1200 RPMs, and I'm just going to start micro meshing the blank to get rid of any of the ripples or imperfections in the CA finish. Final pad here, we're going to work it a little bit longer than usual, simply because you know, we want to make sure we're buffing out all those imperfections. I think the blank is going to look really nice. I'm starting to get a nice clear um, uh, reflection there from the light above the lathe. And the clearer that reflection is, generally, the better the blank looks. Let's take a quick peek. Oh, wow. She's still a little damp. Need to get her uh, wiped off a little bit there, but looking amazing. What do you think about that? I did break my cardinal rule. I don't normally use activator between coats, but since I can't get this uh, CA to dry, I went ahead and did that this time. Um, the Mercury Flex, the CA that I'm using, is supposed to be okay for that. You're supposed to be able to uh, use activator between coats. This is just a beautiful blank. I got one little blemish on it that I see. You guys probably saw it too, but we'll put it behind the clip. We are ready for assembly and you might notice the nib transmission that's already all together. That's because about three minutes ago, this was actually a fully assembled pin that I disassembled because I needed a kit for this blank. Now this type of thing happens all the time in the videos. I don't sell my pins, so I recycle them. Um, and that's what we're doing here. We're gonna recycle this kit. Now I told you that I noticed one flaw on this blank. And it's right here. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a little bit of a mark there. What happened is, as I was putting the CA on, I ended up having a little uh, bubble there. Uh, and I tried to sand through it with a micro mesh, and I got it pretty far down, but there's still a little bit of a, a, little bit of a, 
a raised area there. So what we'll do is, it, and actually it's on the back of the blank, which is perfect. We'll just cover that with the clip and we'll be able to see the rest of the pin in its beauty. I love the knot, that's just gorgeous. So let me go ahead and get a bushing on here and we'll get our press ready to go. And let's get this cap pressed in. Okay, let me take a quick peek at it to make sure everything lines up properly. It appears to. Okay, I gotta be careful. I'm starting to kinda press at a bit of an angle here. Eh, I don't like that. Let me hang on for a second. I'm gonna do something real quick. Because I'm having trouble getting this started, I'm going to get a, a, a tool and I'm going to ream out the end of this blank. And here's the tool, and we're just gonna basically run it around the blank. And what it'll do, let me get a, a brush and clean that out. It chamfers the inside, you can kind of see it a little bit, it chamfers the inside of the brass tube. And hopefully that'll help me start my clip, or my cap, a little bit cleaner. Let me find that spot, there it is right there. Get our bushing put back in there. Doing pretty good. There we go. You want to be really careful with starting a component into the blank because if I start that at a bit of an angle and I don't straighten it out, I can actually crack the blank. It will stretch the tube and crack the blank. But we ended up doing a really nice job there. Take a look at that. Let me get the light adjusted a little bit better so you can see. Got a really nice fit and a really nice finish. And that tiny little blemish is right behind the clip. It'll never be seen. Let's go ahead and put our nib in. There we go. And I couldn't be happier. Take a look at this blank as I roll it around. That's beautiful. I'm so glad that the little blemish we had was on the back of the blank because I love this and I especially love the little knot there. That is just incredible. Love it, absolutely love it. I'd really like to thank you for joining me in the shop for the turning of this, the latest iteration of my Chaos Blank. I don't know how many blanks I've made in this series, uh, maybe six, seven, I don't know, but I've had a great time making them. Uh, I actually have another one on the way very soon, but uh, this I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. I really hope you like it. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.